Thanks so much for having us tonight. And as Dr. Pickering said, the voice of the children matters more than anything. So I'm going to say very little other than to give you brief introductions. We have with us um, two fourth graders, Zoe and Shalia. And um, I just want to give a shout out to Kyle, who was also planning to come, but he ended up with a fever and had to stay home. So we feel bad for him. He was excited to be here. And our magnet coordinator, Cassidy Rankin. So I will turn it over directly to them because we have, I know we have limited time. Thank you very much. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, we are Johnson Steam Academy. We are a magnet school. So we're a STEAM magnet school, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And we provide students a hands-on, minds-on learning approach. So we have a lot of um, cross-graded, cross-curricular um, learning opportunities for these students. So um, as Candy mentioned, we have some fourth graders here who are going to really share um, their story and the learning that has been happening at Johnson. So um, this is some of the photos of the exciting things that have happened this year. Um, we have a Facebook page too that you can keep up to date with that we try to share our story that way. But um, we also do our best to um, integrate the 21st century skills into our learning. So um, the STEAM lab is one of the places that this happens. And so um, these two girls are going to talk about a learning lesson that they've participated in in the STEAM lab that also um, they took the learning from their classroom and use a STEAM lab as um, the place for them to create. So I'm going to pass it over to them. My name is Shalia and I'm a fourth grader at Johnson STEAM Academy. I like Johnson Steam Academy because we get to learn about science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. We go to school. We, we go to the STEAM lab to cre create and build things. The STEAM lab is filled with a bunch of cool surprises, and we get to pick out whatever supplies we want to use for our project. We plan our projects before we start making it. We use the design process. In social studies, we are learning about the progressive era and about tenement housing and how bad they were back then. In the, in the inside of the tenement housing, there are two people sleeping on the bed and clothes on top of, on the top hanging because when they, they didn't have no, when, when they washed their clothes, they didn't have no dryer or a washing machine or no electricity. I'm proud of my, myself because I thought I couldn't do this, but then I just kept trying. When I'm building stuff, it helps me learn. Me learn. Never doubt yourself because if you do, you would never get to do that thing you said you can't do. I couldn't have done this without the best teacher ever, Miss Murphy. My name is Zoe, and I'm a fourth grader at Johnson Steam Academy. I like Johnson Steam Academy because I like hands-on learning and getting to use different materials or electronics. Hands-on learning is much more interesting than just reading out of a book. It's also much more fun. I feel like I learn better when I get to create my own projects or themes of what we are studying. I think it brings out creativity in us. This is our latest project, Tenements. As you can see, it is made of cardboard boxes and other materials we have in our steam lab. We were trying to create a scene from when they had tenements because we are studying the progressive era in tenement living. Because of the projects and others, because of this project and others, I have more opportunity to be creative and learn. Can we give them a round of applause? Um, these, in, these are just two of our um, amazing students. Uh, a lot of our students, all of them, have really great stories to share about um, exciting learning lessons that they've been going through this year. 
So we also um, couldn't be where we are without the support of many people, including our parents. And um, we have a variety of parents who have shared their support for us uh, verbally and also in written um, communication with us. And this is just a comment from um, a lottery parent that we've had. Um, but we also have feedback from our neighborhood parents as well. So we have a wide variety of stakeholders who are really supporting us and helping us, as well as community members as well. So um, we have a student engagement survey that we sent out this year. Um, we don't have any baselines because it's brand new, but we are administering it three times this year. And so um, we've already given it twice. We'll give it one more time, but um, we're hoping to uh, continue to maintain and of course we want to grow this percentage. So these are just three of the questions from the survey, but I'm proud to go to this school. Um, there's also, I feel that what I'm learning in school is important, and this is really important to us. We want them to be able to transfer their knowledge from school to even the next grade to then high school and then to the community, which is why our community partnerships are so important for them to say like, oh, I'm learning this in first grade so that when I become an engineer, I know that I can use this knowledge. And um, the next question is, my assignments are interesting to me. So we really want to keep them um, relevant to what the kids want to learn. And we really get that um, personalized learning and that opportunity to make it matter to them. And then we just want to end with some feedback. So through these student engagement um, surveys, one of our favorite things that we love is the student feedback at the end. So at the end of the survey, every student writes a comment about what they like about school. And so it's really just a great opportunity to see what they what they feel. So I'm going to have these two girls uh, read these quotes. They're not actually theirs, but they're speaking for the voice of their being their peer's voice. So I'm going to let them step back up. My favorite part of coming to JSA is being able to be, be here during the, ch the changes. I have been here for all five years. It's really cool to see all the changes. I also love having a STEAM lab. I love the STEAM lab because it's where you can create what you like, and it's where you can get, you can let your imagination go wild. <laughs> we might get challenging homework, but that's okay because our teacher wants us to strive in excellence in everything we do and we will never give up on our dreams. So thank you to those of um, you who have supported us and just uh, been a part of our story. Um, we would love for you to attend our um, STEAM showcase at Theater Cedar Rapids on April 19th. It's a Tuesday. It's at 7 p.m. Um, information will be going out to our Facebook page, but um, we'll be able to share a little bit more about what's been happening inside at Johnson STEAM Academy. So thank you all for your help. Awesome. Thank you. All right, next up is Roosevelt. Uh, one real quick while they're coming up here. Uh, very proud of the STEAM Academy in, in year one. Um, I would put them up against uh, second and third year magnet schools in terms of what they've accomplished. It's just been amazing, amazing staff, amazing leadership there. Next up is Roosevelt Option. They are in year two. And we have Jess Camacho and a couple of students and a parent. Hi, I am Jess Camacho. I am the science teacher with Roosevelt Option. We thought the best way to explain our success was were to bring you actual students that have shown a lot of growth and success. So we have um, two students and a parent. Manoa is our student this year, and then we have Cece who was here last year and has now moved on to the Jefferson Option, and then Cece's mom is also going to present to us as well. Uh, my name is Manoa, as she said. Okay. At, the being, at the beginning of the year, I felt nervous about option because I never had a different way of learning before. In classes I took as a seventh grader, I didn't, I didn't do well, especially in science, because they used big words and we didn't really learn how to use those words. When I got an option and started to learn on my own, I thought it would be difficult. But as the year went on, I found I really like working on Canvas and technology on my own space. I also find, found the projects 
helped me understand vocab vocabulary better. The thing I liked most was being able to choose what type of project I wanted to work on to better understand my skills. I've also been able to become a positive leader. I won the first option election and here And here's an example of a, a manoa money. <laughs> <laughs> this money, uh, students can be able, they can earn it by completing the work. And looking forward, I think being an option will help me in high school because I'll, I, I learned how to organize myself in getting my work done and how I, how I am in charge of my own learning. I hope other students get the same opportunities I did in high <coughs> school. Thank you. Uh-oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, uh, my you. name is Cecilia Bonacquari, and I'm from the Blended Academy, currently a ninth grader. Um, last year, I was a part of the Roosevelt Option Program. In the beginning, it was stressful and difficult, but the projects changed that. Uh, for example, a couple a couple of students and I got to go to Kinston Hill, where we we worked with uh, the people there, and we we played games with them. We made sure that they were happy, and we just entertained them. Uh, something that we had last year was something called Brand Break, where students get about 15 minutes off their work and um, and just socialize with their friends, go outside, and get some air, and. Uh, we get to learn on our own pace. Um, we did not go by the bells in, uh, in school. And I felt like that was a good thing because we didn't have to rush to classes or, um, or worry about being late to class. And because all of our classes were pretty much connected. And um, I had great teachers that were really nice and were willing to help me with anything that I needed help with. Um, and this year, I am a part of the Blended Academy. What I liked about the Blended Academy is that we have great teachers that are really helpful. And I'm serious about my grades this year. I have a 3.94 GPA, which I am really proud of because <laughs> this is like the greatest GPA I've ever had like my whole life. And, and um, I'm more confident in what I do and I concentrate on the goals that I set up for myself. Um, the teachers are trying to get students interested in community outreach and I try to advance myself at my own pace so I can be able to work on the projects that they have for us to do. And overall, it has been a great experience being a part of the Roosevelt and the Blended Academy. And uh, thank you for your time. And I would like my mom to come up here so she can talk more about how this helped me a lot. Thank you. Hi, my name is Josephine Ngabire. Um, my daughter is Syria. Uh, um, but my English is not perfect. So I'm going to try it. Yeah. Um, I'm so proud of her because I uh, have seen big, big improvement. Uh, just say, um, I want to like say thank you, Roosevelt Option. I want to say a thank you to uh, Jefferson too, uh, because Cecilia was last year. She was very, very, very behind in math. So I remember when I was uh, doing math lab, uh, I had conversation with my teacher. Then I asked her, um, I, I asked him um, that if he is any way I can get help with my daughter. Then uh, she, he told me that um, 
his wife used to teach to Roosevelt, then she, he was like, okay, I'll ask my, my, my wife, then I'll see if I can get any help. Then, uh, like next week later, then uh, he came up with the answer. Then uh, he told me that um, my, uh, my wife said, you can go to Roosevelt then ask about um, option. Yeah, I went there, then uh, I met with her teacher, but I don't remember his name. <laughs> 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 he was so nice, and they decided to put her an option. So since he got, she got an option, he's doing well. He's not doing well only in math. He's like step up for everything. Thank you, teachers. It's good to win the presidency. You get your face on a, on a Absolutely. Dollar, so. <coughs> I, I'm, I'm going to ask later what we get to spend that on. Yeah. <laughs> Next up is the uh, Jefferson option. Um, Cece was the one that got to announce that their name has changed. So if the Jefferson folks who are presenting want to come on up. The Jefferson Option is also in its second year. It expanded this year from three teachers to six and from roughly 80 students to about 180, so or about 160. So, there, all yours. Uh, hello, my name is Nate. I am in the Jefferson Blended Academy. I am currently in ninth grade. Um, everyone here is going to tell you about the Blended Academy, probably their favorite part. All I have is my favorite part because that's all I can think of when I think of the Blended Academy. Uh, personally, what I love about it is that you get to move at your own pace. You get to pace yourself and learn at your own pace. And I believe that by doing so, the student can really connect with their self. Because back in middle school, the teachers never communicated. They never talked. They never did anything with each other. But with the uh, Blended Academy, all three teachers of my last class, they all talk. They all can teach each other subjects. Not the best at each other's subjects, but they try. <laughs> they try. <laughs> um, and that's what I love about it, because you can really indulge yourself within your own learning. You can get the understanding. So it's not the t just the teacher that knows the student. It's you that knows yourself. Because a student can say, oh, yeah, I know my learning. I know where I'm at. But you can really see where you're at. And speaking of advancing, if you advance in a class, you can start working on, let's say, for example, let's say I'm advanced in OA and I continue on. I can uh, get help in math, science, or anything. And that's that. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brianna Range, and I'm a ninth grader in the Blended Academy. So when I first got into the Blended Academy, I was like, oh no. I did terrible in middle school. <laughs> and then I saw that this academy was actually an opportunity for me to see different points of view. And so, and like <laughs> Nate said, if you excel in all your um, classes, you can do these things like projects. The Blended Academy is like a project-based learning. So once you're done with all your work, you can start these projects. We've done a few, and um, people have started some. Earlier in the year, we did a gun violence panel where we brought in police officers and important people to come and talk to us and ask a, and we could ask them questions about gun violence. And uh, currently, I am working on a project. We are trying to make an apparel store at our school. Uh, I like these projects because they show they give us these opportunities to commu uh, to communicate with the community. We get to call um, places in the community and ask them for their help in our projects. Uh, we also get to interact with other students. It's because um, we make these groups and we work on these projects together and we can ask each other for other input. And uh, we just learn real life skills. It's uh, an amazing opportunity to do these projects. And um, so yeah, and when we do these projects, we, before, we get to have our own preferences, uh, like advancing at your own pace. Um, we get teacher help, we get student, you can ask students uh, that excelled ahead of you or um, ones that are at the same pace as you. 
but you can also ask teachers. Teachers also give you help and they um, help you try to advance and they give you tools to uh, advance at your own pace. And, but we also get internet access, so um, we have the canvas that we use, and we use this, and we um, we find our our kind of preference in how fast we go and how fast we learn, and it's a great opportunity to be in the blended academy. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Cade Nordman, and I am a freshman in the Blend Ed Academy. Um, last year, we got a grant to uh, get Surface Pros for the Options Program. Uh, with the Surface Pros, it allows the students to advance at their own pace because we have constant access to Canvas and all the materials online that we need to advance at our own paces. Um, other classes that don't have these, they don't have the luxury to advance at their own pace because the teacher can't teach so many different uh, subjects or points in the curriculum to one or to everybody that needs it. But when we have the Surface Pros, we can get the information that we need either on Canvas or on a different site where we can access it. Uh, the ratio to students per uh, Surface Pro downstairs in the Options Program is about two to one. Um, so not everyone can have one at once, but a lot of the times there's uh, classes uh, that we don't need them, because uh, right now the only class that I need one, the whole class is in science and math, I just move at my own pace. In LA, I do the same thing. So uh, yeah, it really just allows us to move at the pace that we want or just stay with the teachers. It all depends on, I guess, the pace that you can uh, go at yourself. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Hi, I am Lillian Price and I am a ninth grader in the Blended Academy. And one of my favorite parts of uh, what we do is that I am currently working on a project and I am able to do this because of us moving at our own pace. And so I try to advance in each subject as much as I can and it still leaves me with enough time to work on my project which is, which is involving the greenhouse and the garden. And I am working with my uh, classmate, Jackie. And me and her are growing vegetables to either donate or supply our cafeteria with food. And then we are also growing flowers to sell to our teachers at our school. And everything with our project is we get to communicate with lots of people in the community. and. Um, other schools and we got uh, actually a high V grant for $1,000 this year that me and, and my classmate Jackie had written ourselves and we were very proud of that that all of the work that we put into was paying off and we're doing really well with our project so it's just nice to be able to keep up with our schoolwork and advance even more and do really well while also being able to make a difference with not only our school but our community. So, thank you for your time. My name is Brett Coulter. I'm Kira Hammonds. We were students in the Blended Academy last year, and we excelled through our classes so we could start our project. The project we chose was Blue Zones, and we worked to get Jefferson designated as a Blue Zone school, and we actually became one of the first high schools in the nation to get this Blue Zones designation. Mm -hmm. Um, some of the things we did through the Blue Zones project was we implemented a school garden and we brought in some fresh local lettuce into the cafeteria. And we made a healthy school bar, <coughs> snack bar, that students could choose as an option instead of using the vending machines during the day. So personally, we felt that we gained some life skills through the Blue Zones project. Um, some big steps for us were as simple as emailing and calling and 
setting up meetings with health officials and school representatives and companies. Um, we were placed into the Blue Zones project due to what career path we want to follow in the future. Other projects last year, there was a 5K doggy dash that they held at Knoll Ridge and the money went to the Humane Society. And a couple of students did an anti-bullying campaign at Jefferson. And we have the apparel store that started last year that is continuing this year. As sophomores, we found it a challenge to go back to a normal based learning after having the unique opportunity of our one-on-one -on -one time with our teachers and the um, student-based learning that we received as you could excel through your classes and your curriculum at your own pace. Um, this year as sophomores, we continue to gain help from our teachers in our classes this year, which is very helpful. Um, we can ask them about anything in any of our subjects. We feel very grateful to have been in the Blended Academy last year, and we hope that it was, it is successful for others as it was for us. Thank you for having us. Uh, the, the students certainly enjoyed working at their own pace, and I know the, the staff at Jefferson uh, tell us that the majority of the kids are getting through the curriculum by um, mid-April, May, and so they're, uh, they're able to go dive deeper and, and get really into projects and, and even start looking at what next year's curriculum looks like for them. Next up is the Metro STEAM Academy with Dr. Grant. Is it Brock, right? Yes. yes. Thank you, Dr. Pickering. Uh, Thank you for having us this, uh, this evening. Uh, we have the uh, proud, esteemed pleasure to be here with Mr. Brock Corman, who's going to talk a little bit about his experience uh, in the Metro STEAM Academy. Before he comes up, I want to show just briefly, these are some of the photos that represent some of the projects and some of the blended learning opportunities students are having at Metro High School. Um, please follow us on Facebook and on Twitter and on Periscope. Are we on Instagram, too? Instagram. <laughs> Uh, Snapchat coming soon. So, uh, but the Metro STEAM Academy's primary focus has been to uh, get students in, in, involved in the process of entrepreneurship, manufacturing, engineering, design, and uh, and use that in a way that's meaningful for them. And so, uh, so a lot of different projects, a lot of different ideas that come out of uh, that space. This is the first year that we've had this in the building. Um, and it's due to a lot of different partnerships, community partners and business partners, and we're very appreciative of those, of those individuals. It's been to redesign the learning space to fit that need, and so uh, it's going very, very well. And uh, I think the most profound piece is the efficacy piece for students, um, them getting connected to school and feeling that their learning is very meaningful uh, for them in their lives. So, Brock, I'm not going to take any more of your time. I'm going to let you come speak to the board. Hello, my name is Brock Corman. Um, I'm a senior at Metro High School, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Metro STEAM Academy and what it means to me. I would say that mainly the Metro STEAM Academy means two things to me, um, the first being flexibility. Not only flexibility in what you're working on, who you're working on it with, when you're working on it, or even where you're working on it, um, but also flexibility, uh, I'm sorry, flexibility on where you're working on it, who you're working on it with and when you're working on it um, gives you the choice to have total control over your learning environment. And I'm sure if you can tr or compare the work done by students who have control over their learning environment to those who do not have control over their learning environment, such as those in standard class, most standard classes, um, you'll find that those who have control over their learning environment do better work faster and most importantly happier. And I, or at least I can personally say that's true for my case. Um, and the second part that the Metro, I would say the Metro STEAM Academy means to me is diversity. Um, not only diversity in where you're going and the people you meet and the connections that you make, but diversity in the work that you do. Um, for example, right now at the Metro STEAM Academy, we have um, a group of students making art out of old pallets. Um, we have a group of students who just launched a weather balloon into the <laughs> stratosphere. Um, we have a group of students who are collecting styrofoam trays to help uh, re-educate people on the dangers of polystyrene. Um, and we actually have a group of students who are working to build a hydroponic lab right now. Um, so yeah, there's diversity in the people you're meeting, the connections you're making in the community, and also in what you're doing at the school. Thank you. So, uh, so once again, we just uh, thank you for having this uh, time to kind of explain more about 
uh, the Metro STEAM Academy. Um, we still think it's very imperative and important that the students at Metro understand that they're valued. And more importantly, it's important for community to understand that there's real learning taking place um, at Metro High School. We don't consider ourselves to be an alternative school when it comes to high level rigor. And that kind of work is happening uh, in the building. So uh, thank you very much for your time this evening. Oh, I'm thank sorry. And, and I need to, Maddie Price is here with us as well. She didn't want to come up here. So I'm going to make sure that I embarrass her in front of everybody right now. So Maddie Price is with us as well. Hey, last up, the Iowa Big program. Uh, Iowa Big's in its third year. As you are aware, it's with uh, Prairie High School as well as our uh, four high schools. We have students uh, from all those high schools plus Mount Vernon. Uh, they're going to the pharmacy a minute each. They're going to share an, uh, one element of their, uh, of their big journey here. So we'll start with Hannah. Hi, so um, I'm Hannah Bertram. I'm a junior at Jefferson. And I'm a first year at Iowa Big. Um, I'm just going to give you guys kind of a brief overview of why I decided to join Iowa Big and why I love it so much. Um, I definitely think for me it was about exploration and self-discovery. Uh, Iowa Big has given me the opportunity to explore what I might be interested in and what I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, that's kind of a crazy thing to tackle when you think about it, being 17. So uh, that's definitely what it's done for me. Um, through Iowa Big, I've been able to do some projects that have provided some really cool opportunities, as you can see with all my pictures. Um, I've had a lot of fun, so I really, really enjoy it. Um, I feel more connected to my community. I feel more connected to my peers <laughs> all over since multiple high schools are a part of Iowa Big. Um, I definitely went from having kind of a negative view of Cedar Rapids to having a really positive view of one. I think a lot of you know those kids who are like, oh, I can't wait to graduate, get out of Cedar Rapids, I'm going to go somewhere far away. Uh, definitely that was me, but that's completely turned around, and I love it here. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, my name's Erin Burrish, and I'm a senior at Kennedy High School and a second-year student at Big. Um, when I first started big, I was very introverted. I didn't have a lot of self-confidence, and I certainly never saw myself as a leader. Um, but when I came to big, I was exposed to uh, different students from different schools, uh, projects, different passions I didn't even know I had. Um, <clears throat> that really uh, helped me see a lot in myself that I maybe like didn't give myself credit for. Um, and I grew into the leader and the learner that I am today. Um, and I'm incredibly proud of that. I always say that Big has completely transformed me. Um, just standing in front of a podium. Um, I'm a little bit sick right now, so I kind of sound uh, like that. But would, <laughs> would terrify me before I came here. And now it's something I'm asked to do like every other week, I swear. We talk so much. Um, <laughs> And I'm leading a project this year, and I'm really proud of my work, and I have a lot of ownership. Um, and I've, yeah, grown into a leader and a learner that I'm really proud of, so. I'm Calories Trueblood, and I'm a junior at Kennedy High School and a second year big student. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the day in the life of a normal, well, a typical big student. Um, most of the big students um, go to their mothership, which is their high school, Kennedy, um, Washington, Jefferson, a little big lingo for you. Um, and we start out there and occasionally have partner meetings during school hours, and we have to figure out how to make up all of our schoolwork, which we've gotten pretty used to. Um, but it's been a really neat experience doing that. And then what I like to call a little transition period, um, after I have um, big after school. Um, so it's kind of like transitioning into work mode for me. And um, it's been like a really interesting experience because it's just you get to do real world problems, solve real world things in the community, solve problems, and just really get to know everybody in the community and really get out there and do something different, something most students don't get the chance to do. So thank you. Hi, I'm Abby Murdoch. I am a junior at Prairie High School and I am a second year BIG student. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about what BIG offers you that you might not have available at, um, 
every other school in Cedar Rapids. Um, so as you can see pictured here, um, in the middle here is Jan Power. She's a counselor at the Prairie Crest Elementary. And so what, what my project focus on and what we're working together is creating trauma-informed care in every high school. Um, so um, with Hannah and Andrew, we had the opportunity to hold a paper tiger showing, uh, not once but twice. And so we had around 400 um, attendants to both screenings, and that was done not by teachers but by students. Um, that was completely put together by ourselves, advertised by ourselves. Um, the movie was acquired by us. So that, that was an amazing, uh, amazing journey. I'm really proud of that. Um, pictured with me there is Senator Rob Hogue. We're on a first name basis now. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Repre Representative Art Stade. Um, also in the, the far right to me, you'll see um, Governor Brandstad. We actually just recently had the opportunity to sit with, down with him for 90 minutes and kind of um, explain the, the objective of BIG and the opportunities we've had. Um, I would have never imagined that that would have been possible uh, last year. Um, and so seeing, seeing the opportunities that are available just in Cedar Rapids, like Hannah said, makes me want to stay even more. And I'm just very proud of, of the opportunities offered in our community. Hi, um, I'm Maya Gunn-Lubon. I'm a first year student at Iowa Big. And um, something that's really stressed to us at Iowa Big is how important community is and how important young people are in our community. Um, so I'm the leader of a project this year, which is really exciting for me, called He Was a Cedar Rapids. And um, I have a passion for people and for visual arts. And so we're using um, authentic storytelling and um, portrait photography to tell this, um, the stories of humans that we've um, been able to be introduced to in Cedar Rapids. And our project was started because of some of the disconnect that's been happening um, from community to community in Cedar Rapids. And so we're hoping by exposing the stories of the people and showing their faces uh, in our city that we can show people that we're all more alike than different and that our city is amazing and filled with fantastic people. And so yeah, we're just hoping to connect more and more people. And I think this, this project will be really, really powerful. And I'm proud that um, my team that I love will really be able to come out of this with the skills they need to really form authentic relationships with other people, which I think everyone should be able to learn. And I'm really proud that I was presented with that opportunity at my age, that I will be able to carry on these skills for a very, very long time. So yeah, I would big means a lot to me. <laughs> so, thank you. Uh, hi, my, name's, my name is Andrew Ayler. I'm a junior at Jefferson High School. This is my first year in the Iowa Big program, and boy, has it been different than years past. Um, joining Iowa Big, it was different than I expected, but it's a good different. Uh, preparing me for my uh, secondary education going on to college, I have huge dreams. I hopefully want to go on to attend University of Washington or University of Michigan to get my degree in biomedical engineering. And then I want to go off to Johns Hopkins or Cornell University to get my MD in hopes of being a pediatric research doctor at St. Jude's Children's Hospitals in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And with that, that's a huge goal. And so we have to have something to get me there. So originally <laughs> told, originally I was told, make sure you do all the AP, you can get all the AP that you can get. And so that was one of my big concerns getting in. Well, there's been a strange progression we're seeing throughout the universities actually kind of dropping off some of the AP. And while it's still extremely important to have AP, I was needing something else to push me along to the rest of the way to get me into these top universities. And that's where Iowa Big stepped in. So right now I'm doing research at University of Northern Iowa on uh, 26 new grape species in the state of Iowa. Uh, we're the second largest grape grower state in the nation, right behind California. Real surprising, not all the people know that. And uh, I'm now being offered research opportunities at University of Iowa, Cornell College, Simpson College, and other colleges and universities throughout the state, which is fantastic. And this is, it's a huge deal for me when I take this on to my college resumes and applying for college. Having my AP courses accompanied by this type of experience throughout Iowa Big is huge. It's to the point where I 
talk to admissions counselors and they're like, holy crap, you're a high schooler, <laughs> like, what is this? And it's like, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's very, very, this program for me is extremely important when preparing for what's beyond high school. Thanks to the Iowa Big staff. Um, I know that uh, took some time. That's five, five innovative projects, but we wanted to uh, give you a quick update and let the kids talk to you about that. So you saw the major innovations in the district. There's innovations going on every day in classrooms all over, but you saw the major ones tonight from elementary through middle school and high school. Uh, if you have any questions for me or anybody that's left, <laughs> uh, be happy to answer. Qu questions? No, all of you did a great job. Thank you. That was uh, very informative. I, I truly enjoyed it. Thank you all. Absolutely. Any other questions? No? I have a comment. Comment. Go, go for so it. So I have to commend Dave Benson uh, for hiring Trace Pickering into the district to change the traditional uh, classroom experience into what all of you shared with us tonight in the many more students that you represent in your school. So thank you to Trace and the staff that supports Trace and the principals and the teachers because just because he says it and just because Brad Buck still supports it and the board still supports it doesn't mean it actually is going to work in the classroom. So thank all of you for all of your efforts and making a learning experience so valuable to our students that will provide years of um, success. And how heartwarming it is for us to hear that you love Cedar Rapids mm -hmm. and you discovered things about Cedar Rapids that you never would have discovered had you just gone through your traditional K-12 experience. So we hope you all come back, come back as teachers, come back as engineers, come back as administrators, and come back and have our community experience all of the things that you are bringing to us tonight. Thank you very much. Good question. One uh, <laughs> one final thing. If there's any other if there's other comments, Jessica can get the slide back up. We are not done. We are going to continue to innovate and move forward with models and uh, learn and keep providing as much choice and options for our kids and our teachers that we can. So next year, up up on deck, as you know, the Kenwood Leadership Academy Magnet School uh, will open up. Uh, Washington High School is starting a Science and World Language Academy uh, to try to provide additional support to students who should academically be doing better than they are through vertical tutoring, something called vertical tutoring, and uh, much stronger mentoring and cohort grouping. Uh, the Jefferson option, as you learned tonight, becomes blended ed, and it's going to expand into 10th grade. So the sophomores you heard speak tonight will, will have an option to stay in that kind of option. Um, Roosevelt is entering its planning stage. Whether we get the magnet school grant or not, Roosevelt will be our first middle school magnet school a year from August. And finally, as it relates to the grant, some exciting news. Uh, it's taken some time to put it all together, but we're excited to announce that we're going to add a downtown Montessori Elementary School to our grant application. And if, if we would get the federal grant, we would uh, look to open a downtown school with a Montessori focus. So uh, innovation is not going to stop. Thank you. And, and Trace, do you want to uh, just comment briefly on the Montessori school? That would be for which grades? Yes, we, uh, we've been working with the Cedar Valley Montessori School who offer preschool and up through a kindergarten experience. So we are looking at opening first grade, uh, first through fifth or first through sixth grade in partnership with Cedar Valley. Awesome. All right. Now questions, since there was this last slide. <laughs> Any? All right, seeing none, thank you, Trace, and thanks to all of you for coming tonight and sharing all those great experiences. We're uh, excited, to, as Mary and others have said, to be able to support all of your work in those areas. So thank you.